Hey guys, welcome back to BJ Tech News, and this is Bernardo. So today's video is based on what I had to do today at the office at a client site. And the client site, uh, I built them a Windows Server 2008 R2 server with WDS services. And they wanted to upgrade their machine as well as upgraded WDS so they could get ready to deploy Windows 8. Now, the problem is, is that rather than doing an upgrade, they wanted to do everything brand new, fresh from the ground up. So this is what I'm going to show you guys. So I got a Windows 2012 server. Uh, right now it's running at the directory DACP DNS. It's running the whole nine yards, which is not best practice to do. But this is only for a testing environment. So the first thing you want to do is you want to add the WDS row. So to do that, you go into your server manager dashboard, click on manage, add roles and features, hit next, uh, hit next, hit next on this. Uh, and you want to go on this page right here. You want to select the Windows Deployment Services. It's going to prop up of all the other features that it needs to add. You will just click Add Features. Click Next. Click Next because you don't need anything else. Click Next. Uh, make sure the Deployment Server and Transport Server is checked off. By default it is, but just always make sure. Click Next. Uh, if you want, you can check restart destination server automatically if required. Most likely you don't. And hit install. Now, so once it's finished, uh, most likely you're going to get installation succeeded on blah, blah, blah server. Uh, you can press close. Now, it's time to configure your WDS server. Once it's installed, it's up and running, it's time to configure it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go inside my start menu. Oops, not that. Go inside my start menu right here and you have it right here what I'm going to do is going to right click on it and I'm going to pin it to the taskbar because I'm going to constantly use it all the time and I want to have easy access to it so you're going to double you know click on that and I'm going to open this guy up open up servers like right now by default it's going to have an exclamation point because it hasn't been configured so you're going to do is right click on it configure the server read all these goodies and booties that you want click on next now it's up to you if you want to do a standalone server or you want to integrate it with your active directory i want to integrate it integrated with active directory because this is a new feature that windows server 2012 and wds has so i want to use it i want to take advantage of it hit next uh choose a path by default it goes to your c drive it's not recommended for this to go to your c drive Oh, because this is a testing environment, I'm going to leave it as is, but best practice is if you have a partition or a second hard drive, put it on that partition. Don't put it on the root of the Windows uh, operating system. Click Next. Again, it's going to warn you, I do want to do this. Uh, I'm going to leave this as defaults because I am going to configure the DHCP later, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Hit Next. Now, I'm going to pick Respond to All Client Computers, Known or Unknown, because again, it is a trusted network. Uh, I trust all the machines that are going in and pixie booting. Uh, if not, uh, it's up to you. But for this uh, video, I'm going to do response to all clients. Hit next. And it's going to configure itself, as you can see. Now, once it finished configuring itself, the service did not respond to start or control requests in a timely manner. So that means it didn't start up. See that stop sign right here? That's not good. So what you want to do, you want to right click on your WDS server. Go to all tasks and you want to start it. Okay, always want to restart it and press OK. Got that green mark, that green, that, that little green play button right there means it's running, it's good to go. Now, the next thing that you want to do is um, you want to add a boot image. Okay, we need to add a boot image. Now, because my client wants to do Windows 8 and he only want to use WDS, uh, what I normally do is I like to keep everything nice and orderly. And I going to uh, what I did basically, I went inside and install images. I right click, and I did a add image group. And within the add image group, I called uh, for this video. I'm going to call BJ Deployment Deployment Group. But most likely you want to name it whatever you want. Press OK. Now, once you do that, it is time to 
uh, add a boot image. Now, adding a boot image is basically to send an image to a remote machine. So the way that we could do that inside boot images, we want to right click, add a boot image. Okay. And the file location that you want is, I already have, I'm going to show you guys, I have a CD already of Windows 8 32 bit already in, and you want to navigate into the source location to find the boot.win file. So that's where we're going to go. Okay. Uh, go to the D, source, and boot win file. That's the one that you want. Hit open, hit next. Now it's up to you. This is really, really up to you. Uh, what you want to call it? I'm gonna give it. Let's go install an image. Again, it's really up to you what you want to call it. I'm gonna call it as this. Uh, hit next. Hit next, and let it do its thing. Now, once it's completed, you're gonna hit finish. Excellent, excellent. So the next thing that you want to do is now for best practice, I'm running everything on a CD. But a lot of people will, what they like to do is grab all the source files, the complete DVD of Windows 8, and place it locally on their machine. You could do that, but again, this is only testing. I'm getting all the information from a CD, but best practice is copy all that information, extract the ISO into a file locally on the machine, and you could do it that way. Okay. Now the next thing that we're I'm going to show you guys is adding a captured image to take an image from a remote machine. Okay. Remember, this is a custom image that the guy wants to do. So basically, he's having a machine on the side of Windows 8, customizing. He wants to capture it, and that's what he wants to deploy. So the next thing that you want to do is, on your boot image that you did, you want to right-click on it, and you want to create a capture image. Okay. Now, this is up to you what you want to name it. I'm going to name this bad boy. Uh, let's 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 go capture. Let me see if I spell it right. Capture, <laughs> capture an image. Okay. Now the location of the file is really up to you. Now I'm gonna try keep everything simple and I'm gonna put it in browse. And remember that remote install that we did. Uh, I think it's on the C drive. Remote install. And you can actually. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember how I did it. Boot. I'm gonna boot. I'm gonna put 86 because the reason why I'm, I put it in the 86 is because um it's a 32 bit. If you're running a 64 bit, put it in a 64 bit. It's uh English. And within English, what you wanna do is give it a name. Now the name is real simple. It's up to you. I'm gonna do capture. Uh, let me see if I spell it right. Capture image dot whim. And there we go. Got it. Now, depending on what operating system you're doing, if it's a 64 bit, make sure that you're putting it inside the 64 bit E and U, United States English. Got it. And then what you want to do is click next. It's going to extract the image from the source image and it's going to create that file for you. All right, guys, once it's done, what you want to do is you, you can actually do a checkbox to add the image to the server when the wizard is closed, which is pretty cool, which is a new feature. You don't have to add it. Uh, you do have to add it um, regardless. But uh, with the new WDS within server 2012, it, you know, it does that for you. So that's pretty cool. Uh, from right here, it's up to you what name you want to give it. Uh, I pro I'm going to leave it the same as capture an image and hit next and it's going to import it into your WDS server. Now once that's completed, I'm going to show you guys how to configure your DHCP server uh, for your WDS. That's completed. Excellent. Awesome. And uh, the next step is configuring your DHCP for your WDS. Now, uh, this is only a part one. Uh, hopefully, when I get to it, uh, I need to. I'm gonna show you guys how to actually deploy and capture an image within WDS. So stay tuned for those episodes. Uh, so let's configure this guy. We want to do the IP4 because that's what we're doing. We want to right click and uh, 
click on server options right click and configure options now configure server options so what you want to do is from here you want to locate 66 and 67 now 66 is actually a boot server host name Let's see if I could find it okay where are you, where are you? 66 okay now the string that you want to provide it is actually the IP address of your WDS server. Now I don't know my IP address by heart, so I'm just gonna IP config it, and I'm gonna type it in uh, to 11, 31. Okay, and we're gonna apply that. Now the next one that you want to do, let me exit out of this command prompt. Next one that you want to do is 67. Okay. Now 67 is the boot file name. Okay. Now the string value that you want to do is really simple. It's going to be boot. Now depending on where your what you did was it 64 or 86? For me it was 86. Oops, sorry. Backslash 80 x86 backslash w space dsnp bp dot com. Okay, so again, boot backslash x86, depending on where you put the image in 64 86. For me, I did it in um, I did it in 86, and this is not a space, is wd. SNBP.com, and then once you do that, you press apply, and that's it. Now you're ready to capture an image of your reference Windows 8 machine. Now, basically, that's going to be part two, and then part three, I'm going to show you guys how to deploy that stuff to many targets on your network. And hopefully, you guys enjoy this video, and I catch you guys later. Peace out.